Everyone loves horror. Ah, cheap jump scare! It hurts. The horror community has always had fans of different things, different sub-genres of horror. Some like slashers, some like analog horror, and some like a mix of all of the above. However, there is one genre of horror that doesn't seem to be discussed as much as the rest, or at least no one really likes to enjoy talking about it too much. Of course, some people do enjoy talking about it, but not everyone as you don't see it as much in current mainstream media. This horror I'm going to talk about is extreme horror, which is an umbrella term for horror that can be disturbing, almost too disturbing for some. On my last video, I discussed the limitations of horror, and in it, I found that a lot of horror that constantly borders this limit defined as extreme horror. I actually had a lot of comments from extreme horror fans discussing their views on the topic. Many of these expressing their love for horror that can feel like it's going too far, but is usually always respectful about the subject matter being discussed or shown. Before we continue, I want to reiterate that this is not to be confused with people who get off to some extreme horror. That's right, there's an amount of people who actually use this type of horror to get off and even go far as to watch actual snuff films to get their sick kicks. I want to really make sure that we're not talking about those people, we're just talking about people who enjoy horror that's a bit spicier than normal. While extreme horror doesn't exactly have a definition that you can find online, I will be saying Wikipedia's definition of extreme cinema, which I do feel kind of helps explain what exactly extreme horror is. Wikipedia defines it as a subgenre of cinema that can be distinguished by its excessive amount of violence or sex. Now, of course, I just want to remind you that this can apply to more than just cinema, of course. This can be in books and in other different forms of media. In my previous video, I discussed an extreme horror book called Playground by Aaron Beauregard, which is a book where I can sum it up as Saw, but for children. It involves parents being forced to watch as their children are forced to go through many, many different traps and puzzles that very well end up in their deaths and mutilation. Also in this book is a fair amount of discussion of also chess. Now I know many of you may be thinking, why would anyone be into this? Or why would anyone enjoy this? Well, you see, like I said earlier, everyone has their own horror that they enjoy. And many people simply feel that mainstream horror just isn't enough or extreme for them. They think it's very tame. And, well, this is the type of stuff that they may enjoy. For them, it may feel as real horror and is usually more grounded than horror that comes from supernatural. Not saying that extreme horror cannot be supernatural, but a lot of the horror of extreme horror does come from the realness of it at times. I won't lie, I bought the book and let it collect dust at first, waiting to read it to use it for a video, but once I picked it up, I found myself captivated. The disgusting details about the brutality of the things that happened to the characters is something I hadn't ever read before. Sure, in curiosity, I may have viewed real-life horror and brutality, but the human mind and imagination can really go wild when an author knows how to describe something in great detail. And so, because of this, the book had captured me, and I ended up finishing it in one day. I would hardly call myself an extreme horror fan, only going as far as to really just dip my toes in the genre, but I did still manage to find some enjoyment out of it. Even after finishing the book, the thoughts of all the horrible actions against the characters in it messed with my whole day. It made me almost feel sick. And if that was the author's goal, then I would say he did a very fine job. An author's ability to make words on paper affect you physically or mentally in a good or bad way is honestly signs that he did a really well job. Now, of course, this sick feeling may not be, you know, a good thing for some of you, but I, I think what the readers of Extreme Horror like is that they're able to feel like this. They're able to, like, have their mood changed by a book or something they watched, and that kind of adrenaline mixed with mopiness maybe is something they enjoy. But still, it's impressive that words on a page were able to make me feel this way. From what I've seen, the genre itself is more of a you-know-it-when-you-see-it type of deal. I've learned that a lot of people actually find the genre a lot more broad than initially imagined. Uh, some people, for example, consider Hellraiser extreme horror, even though by my standards, I think that would be pretty tame if someone were to consider it extreme horror. But some people just find it too much to handle and classify it as such. A well-known example of extreme horror would be that of The Human Centipede. Now that's a movie I know you're probably very familiar with. I mean, if you are an average horror viewer and put on The Human Centipede on Netflix thinking it was a normal horror movie, I'm sure you'd be just as shocked as those discovering it when it first came out. 
However, in my opinion, the extremes of extreme horror can truly go even beyond that of the human centipede. A great example of this would be a film called The Sadness, a movie I saw with my friends thinking it was going to be a crazy over-the-top zombie movie. For those of you who've seen it, you know just how wrong I was. In fact, it's so bad, I can't even show that many clips in this video, I actually kind of had to cherry pick a lot of this. But you'd be shocked to learn that also, it is considered body horror by Wikipedia. While it definitely does contain a lot of body horror, I would definitely see it more as an extreme horror film. This is because of its extreme depictions of both murder, brutality, and loss of trust against both adults, children, and yet it manages to feel necessary to tell its story. Rather than forced in for shock value, or, you know, to make the reader feel that it's extreme, it, it feels like it was actually necessary to the story to be told. A lot of people feel that this may go too far, and yet it does go too far, but it feels incredibly unique as it doesn't feel forced and it isn't, it isn't really disrespectful in the story it's telling. It feels almost incredibly unique since I hadn't seen a horror movie like it, actually. Because this was one of my first experiences watching an extreme horror movie, I was always shocked by everything on screen. Just when I thought they couldn't take it any further, they did, and it was still entertaining. After the movie, I felt almost sick to my stomach, but at that moment, despite never declaring myself an extreme horror fan, I, I got it. I understood the appeal of the genre. I had never seen anything like this in a horror movie before, which made this movie incredibly unique in the fact that it was not only able to display this, but keep my attention throughout the movie. It was like a car crash. I couldn't look away from it. In that moment, I also understood the fans of extreme horror. Not everyone who enjoys extreme horror is some sicko who just loves looking at the shocking and gruesome stuff because maybe they get off to it or, you know, they just enjoy cheap content like that. No, it was like morbid curiosity. Because of its extreme nature, it felt very unique from mainstream horror. Sure, it had a couple tropes of mainstream horror because, I mean, you know, they weren't technically zombies, but they're kind of zombies. And to explain it in the movie's terms, basically the reason that people do these horrible things is because they're infected by a virus that doesn't make them zombies, but makes them give in to every intrusive thought imaginable. And not only that, but it makes it times 10. For example, if someone cuts you off and takes your parking spot or something, you'd think, oh, I'd love to tell this guy off. In this movie, you would actually just dismember them. And it's just such a unique idea that I haven't seen before that could have only worked in this extreme horror setting that I, I really kind of got why people were attracted to this genre of horror, as it could only really work in this type of movie. See, while I wouldn't call myself an extreme horror fan, I wouldn't mind exposing myself to more of it in the future to really get more of an experience. See, the appeal I think comes from the fact that someone might feel a horror movie didn't explore a topic far enough, or it stopped just short of going crazy or in, you know, into the good part. And I feel like those that wanted to see the movie go further and go crazier than this is that this might be the genre to go to. How far can someone push the limit and creativity of these horrid actions? And while watching some, I can see that it can be done in a respectful manner while still being decently or very well written. In fact, I wonder why people don't push it further and further and further and further and further and further. Is it on? <laughs> okay, guys, what it is, super duper extreme horror fan here. And today, I have the craziest movie I'm going to shoot for you guys. <laughs> I call it, oh, it's stuck in my pocket, <laughs> I call it Hammer versus Hedgehog. Oh wait, I haven't started recording yet. Oh wait, yes I did. Hammer versus Hedgehog. Look at her. Isn't she beautiful? She's going to be the star of my new show. She's a little nervous, but trust me, this will be the most extreme horror you've ever seen. Now I just gotta take her out of her litter pouch. <gasps> Look how cute she is. <laughs> get ready to watch the action. Let me get the money shot real quick. Okay, are you guys watching her? <laughs> get ready. We're gonna watch all the action. <laughs> Three, two, one. As discussed in my last video, horror can be amazing when pushing beyond the limits. It can really lead to some real innovations. It can very easily go down a bad hill if one is inexperienced in writing extreme horror or is just simply a bad person not really seeking to create real horror, if that makes sense. 
it gets to the point where it feels less like experimentation in the horror genre and more into a dark, disgusting turn that I myself would never recommend anyone go into. Extreme horror doesn't stop at the sadness, and even though that did seem like a very big step up for extreme horror, there is stuff that goes way further that sadly we do have to kind of discuss today. Extreme horror doesn't stop at the sadness. I would like to introduce a certain someone named Lucifer Valentine. Before I go into a discussion of him, I want you all to know this man has several allegations against him on varying degrees uh, as far as abuse and grooming and other such awful things. And even though we're going to discuss his work, I can't stop you from being morbidly curious to checking out his stuff. So if you do plan to do that out of morbid curiosity or for whatever reason, I highly suggest you watch it in such a way where you don't have to give him money if you do feel that curious. Uh, now, of course, yeah, not giving him money if you catch my drift, you know, hint, hint, wink, wink, see of thieves. Lucifer Valentine is a director who prides himself on extreme horror movies. These can include Slaughter Vomit Dolls, which is borderline, if not already, a fetish film. The creator will boast that it is horror, and anyone who thinks it is not horror is, and Snowflake, who just couldn't handle it. And no, just no. This is not horror. This is a fetish film. A disgusting and gross film made for people to get off to. Also, from the reviews I read, it's not very good. Yet... Some people will claim that this type of movie is horror, it's just too disturbing for you. And it, I feel as if the film doesn't go out to be a horror movie, it just tries to disturb or be someone's, you know, material for that night. Horror is meant to scare, make you stay up at night, and think someone is always around you. You know, this can be psychological, body horror, or even a cheap jump scare, that's horror. This film wasn't made to terrify, it, it was made for sickos to get off to, and a way for the director to predator on all his actresses that he has in the movie. Utilizing his gross vomit fetish that the director is definitely into by the way, which can be proved by some of the allegations if you feel like reading that, it shows that he's not really a groomer but one that makes that uses this film to get access to girls in a way. And I feel like it, it's just such a disgusting thing that I've seen people defend saying this is true horror. And I, I want people to be clear that this is not extreme horror. Th this is the point where experimentation goes too far and goes borderline exploitative. I think it's important to mention because when I mention extreme horror, a lot of people are going to try and loop films like this in with extreme horror. And I'm here to kind of clear up that this is not extreme horror, it's not a subgenre of extreme horror. I mean, well, maybe it is, but to me, in my personal opinion, this is not horror. This is a movie that is just exploitative and is just not healthy for the horror community. And I, I, I have to bring it up because I have to make sure everyone who watches this video understands that when you think of an extreme horror fan, don't think of this as the movies they're into. Think of stuff like The Sadness or, you know, even Human Centipede or Splatterpunk. That's extreme horror. That's stuff that goes, you know, to a certain point. You know, another example of Lucifer Valentine's I think is exploitative is Black Metal Veins, which is a graphic, in air quotes, docudrama detailing the hopeless lives of several young people addicted to heroin, according to IMDb. And while sure, a lot of things that happens in the movie are dramatized, all the drug use of heroin in the movie is very real. And I want to ask you, the audience, if you were going to shoot a documentary or a docudrama about heroin addicts, do you think it would be a good idea to record real heroin addicts to act out your planned drama instead of actors on a screen? If you want to make a film that is a documentary about heroin addicts, then yes. You probably should use real heroin addicts because that is, you know, nothing's more cold and hard than the truth. But if you're going to make those people act on screen horrific acts such as, you know, a planned scene, a death scene, you know, at that point you might as well hire actors. You're not making a documentary, you're making a docudrama. And if you're using real heroin addicts to make your docudrama, I don't know, to me it feels exploitative. I know some of you may disagree, and I'll say right now, this is all my opinion. I'm sure many of you are like, well, I don't see an issue with it. And you know what? I don't know. Maybe that's just me. And yet, some people would still describe even this as a horror movie. Or, you know, it's definitely going to be horrifying, but I wouldn't really call it a horror movie. And I think the the line should be when you go from trying to make extreme horror to actually being the extreme horror.
But that's all I really have to say about extreme horror for the time being. I did a bit of an analysis and dive into the topic myself, having experienced some of it, but not really being a true fan of the genre myself. Oh, you're going on my back. Let me know if you agree with some of my statements, if you are an extreme horror fan, on whether you think my thoughts on the genre are correct. Do I think I'm being a little too limitational on it? Do you think it should go even further than even what I discussed? Let me know in the comments, I'll very gladly discuss it with you and see if we can explore more thoughts on it. But yes, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in October. Yeah. <laughs> Look at her, she's so cute. Subscribe to Dead Hats or you'll die tomorrow.